So I've been instructed by my good friend Ace to make this SFN tutorial video, just going over the basics and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that. So I've got a commission that I'm doing right now. So yeah, I'm going to be doing this commission in this tutorial, I guess. So we're going to call it Smoosh. You can call it whatever you want. So this is just how you load up a map. So this is what comes up when you first start up SFM. You get to choose your new session name, where you want to save everything, frame rate if you're doing animations and such, and you can have all these recent stuff, yeah. It's not super important, but some people like it. Uh, these are pretty cool, actually. If you just want to uh, start editing cosmetics and stuff, you can load up these. These are pre-made animations, and all you can really do is just change cosmetics. You can change some of the stuff that goes on, but nothing too drastic, otherwise you just kind of ruin it in my opinion, but you know. Let's get on with this. Alright, so now that you've done this, all you've got to do is press create, and that'll start up everything. So, you'll notice that it says no map loaded here. Now, if you want to load up a map, all you've got to do is right click in this black space here, and click load map. But first of all, what I normally do is I go to render settings, I turn off ambient occlusion, just for while I'm editing. And then, you load up a map, and choose any map you want, uh, most maps are in the uh, TF folder right here. Oh, he wants upward, okay. Uh, so yeah, he wants upward, so you type in the map you want, and it comes up. So not all the new maps are here, by the way, just so you know. Uh, for some of them, you've actually got to download them off the workshop. For example, Sujin is not here. Uh, if you go into the workshop and type in Sujin, that comes up. If you look here, I've got it here. Um, but yeah, back to the TF folder. Upward. Load up upward. And it might take a while to load, because my computer is pretty slow. So yeah, I'll get back to you when it's loaded, I guess. Okay, right. So now that our map's loaded, what you're going to do is you can go to the motion editor right here. Well, this is what I normally do. You don't have to go in here yet, but it's just easier for me, I think. And then, to move this camera right here, you've got to hold on here, and you can move it. Oh god, look at the frame rate, Jesus Christ. Uh, WASD to move it around, just like you normally would in TF2. You can hold shift to sprint, control to slow down. Uh, at the moment I'm just trying to find a spot on the map that I'd probably put him in. Uh, you know what, let's put him up here. Why not? Put him up there. Right. So, now that you've got the position you want, what you're gonna do is where it says work camera right here, click his drop down arrow here, change scene camera, new camera. And now that this is all sorted out, you can just click on this window right here, click camera one, and it goes straight into the work camera, and you can move this like normal again. Okay, so to import a model, what you've got to do first of all, is click this drop down here, create animation set for new model. Now if you want a character model, it's probably best if you go to TF Movies, because they've got a lot more there. If you just type in the model you're after, the character, it should come up pretty quickly. So I'm after a medic. Double click that, it comes in. I'm a bit late to say that, aren't I? Uh, so yeah, you can click it, and then you can move it in any direction. This is... I never really use that bit, actually. Control Z to uh, revert changes, by the way, in case you didn't know. So this is obviously to rotate your player model, and this is to move it. Now, I'm pretty terrible with SFM, if I do so myself, but like people seem to like my style of SFM posters, so that's why I'm basing this uh, tutorial on a commission that I'm doing. Okay, so I'm sure this person said he wants something to do with his bone saw. So, if you're not very good with posing, which, if you're here as a beginner, you probably won't be. That's me included, by the way. You right-click on the character model, import, sequence, and then it brings up all of this stuff right here, all of this good stuff. So, yeah, it gives off all the things you can do in the game. If you specify it to T, it brings up all the taunts. I just went off that, and I'm bad. Uh, the frame rate's pretty low, just because I'm recording, I think. It's normally not too high, but it's a lot higher than it is right now. Um, I don't even know what taunt the medic does normally. Um, you know, let's... Right, we'll go to R for run. And we'll run melee. If you want to have the character running, then there's the x-axis and y-axis here. So you just move this up. As you get higher, he runs faster. So I'm going to put it there. Right, we're going to make it so... Yeah, that... Yeah, I'll have it like that. 
I was gonna say what I was gonna put you. Yeah, this is cringy. <laughs> and to freeze the player model so that when you play it, he doesn't continue moving. Uh, let's just get back to that pose ish. You find the playhead bar here, click and drag along. It's uh, there. And then that stops him from moving. If you go back, he stays in the position constantly. Alright, so let's see what he has then. So he has the mustachioed man. So if you want to add uh, cosmetics and such, you right click again. Then you add Team Fortress item. Mustachioed man right here. We've got that in. Alright. Uh, we'll sort out his eyes and stuff when we get further along. Um, he wants the heat of winter. So let's get that in. Heat of winter right there. And then he also has the nunhood. No, no, I typed in yan. I'm just, I'm just bad at typing in general. So if you see me make a mistake, don't be surprised. It happens a lot for me. I think he said festive bone saw, wasn't it? Uh. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna have to assume it's festive bone saw. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut ahead and I'm gonna ask him. All right, so he said yes for that. That was a pretty quick reply, actually. Uh, so we go to festive uh, bone saw right there. Uh, I'm sure for some of these models it doesn't actually come with the lights on. I'm sure I've had a couple like that. But if it doesn't do that, you just gotta search the uh, model folder for that. But not in the TF2 TF movie, sorry. You have to actually go into the TF file for that, and yeah, I can't get into that because mine's all bugged and stuff. It won't let me see the model I'm after. So yeah. And now that we've got that, uh, does he have any paints? He has a purple sheen. That doesn't really matter right now. Uh, no. Alright, so to change camera angles and, yeah, like what I do, you click this drop down again and create animation set. What this does, it lets you create an animation set for the camera. So if you click off this, you can't move the camera. And yeah, move this along. And then you see these arrows appear. You click those. Go right over a lenses. I like to use the 50mm lens. But a lot of people like different things. So, you know. You just choose whichever one you like the best. Uh, well, maybe change his head position. So you can press the plus button to open up all of these parts of his body. I'm going to grab the head and rotate it so he's looking at us. Alright, click that minus. And then if we want to go closer, just look at the eyes. There's these uh, bars along here to adjust the position of the eyes. You can use them uh, just to make it look like he's looking at the camera, kind of. Uh, what happens if we make him smile? Does it look bad with the cosmetic? Uh, not particularly. I like that. Uh, so yeah, now we need to change the focal distance, which is pretty much where the uh, the blur starts. So we can put it up to about there-ish. That's that should be decent. And the aperture is the level of blur. So I normally put it up to like near middle. That seems to be fine. Alright, and then we can turn down the lighting of the map a bit, which is recommended. Turn it down to about that-ish. Seems good. And uh yeah. There's multiple types of lights that I like to use. Like I'll show you each type of light that I like. So there's a three-point light that I like to use a lot, which is like that. Turn the intensity down a bit. Oh yeah, and you drag the light along to the work camera if you want to position it like the work camera. Uh, yeah, move this along here. Turn the intensity down. That didn't even work. Right, turn the intensity down for that. New light. Bring it over here. Turn it around. And yeah, right, so here's where stuff gets different. So with those lights, it was pretty easy. Move them, turn down intensity, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. With this one, <clears throat> for the back camera, it's recommended you turn up the constant as you end, uh, I can't read. Uh, that creates kind of like, I don't know what kind of effect to describe it as. A nice effect, let's call it that. So if we can do that, turn down the intensity. And then, yeah, right click this again. Render settings. I normally turn off motion blur. I don't know why. I just don't like it normally. Depends if there's an unusual effect or not. Uh, 
turn ambient occlusion back on. And then for the depth of field samples, it says use camera settings. I use 1024 override. And click OK. Go back into the clip editor. And you'll be able to see what it looks like. Uh, there's something that I need to change actually. Uh, medic, set body groups, clothes and hands. Uh, no, that's not it. Mm, I've never actually done medics properly, so you know you just gotta gotta cut me some slack right now. Uh, you know, let's keep the backpack off. But we 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 we'll figure this out. Uh, we might not actually be able to figure it out. Actually, <laughs> never mind. I'm sure you'll be fine with that. Uh, so now the other type of light that I like. So we'll turn this off now. Uh, we'll delete all of these lights. And then you click the plus button here. Body. Right click on bip underscore neck. Dag utilities menu. Create lights underscore constrain constrained. I can't read to save my life. I'm not even kidding. Me. And then key light. Turn the intensity for that up a bit. This creates like a, a spotlight effect. It will give it some colour, maybe a blue colour. Turn that all the way down there. Bring the green down. Bring the red down. Uh, turn the intensity down a little bit, actually. Uh, bounce light. Uh, we'll leave this as it is, I guess. But yeah, turn that up a little bit. Fill light. Turn that up. Not too much, though. And rim light, again. Constant attuance. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Turn that up, and then turn the intensity down a little bit. This is the one I normally go for now. It's one I've started using more a bit recently. Turn back on ambient occlusion, and go back into there, and see what it looks like. Okay, right, so I just realized it's, it's opened in this one. We, we don't want it in that one. We want it in this one right here. Is it? There we go. So that's what the finished product will look like for this one. To render, you gotta go to File, Export, Poster, click Save, and then the output file. Uh, you can choose wherever you want for this. I'll create a file on my desktop with like loads of different stuff. Uh, for this one, I'll just put smoosh slash tutorial. Uh, save that. Uh, I normally like to use a JPEG file with 1920 by 1080 it's best quality for me and yeah export and it'll start working its magic 